Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Koboman. In this video I will talk about top 10 help desk interview questions and answers. This is based on an article on my website that is called CosmicNova.com. So if you're interested in reading this, just reading this article on your own, there will be a link in the description box below. So the reason I wanted to talk about this particular article is because not only are these questions going to be asked during an interview, or there's a really high chance they will be asked during an interview, is that they will... Uh, also have multiple choice answers. So whenever I go through these, and let me scroll down here a little bit here and kind of show you an example why I picked this article. For example, number one, it says, what makes a good help desk employee? There are multiple ways to answer this, right? So what I want to do is basically kind of explain a little bit what, what I mean by A, what I mean by B, and what I mean by C. Of course, all of these are designed so you can easily understand what I mean. However, I will spend more time to actually explain why this is important or for example for the reason you would answer a certain way when it comes to this question okay so all right let's start with number one what makes a good help desk employee so under a we have have the ability to listen and resolve problems so when you're you know when you're doing help desk you're going to be on on the phone most likely so if you have the ability to listen really good you'll be able to resolve problems in a timely manner right if you don't have ability to listen or pay attention, um, then, you know, you may struggle a little bit when it comes to help desk because the last thing you want to do is constantly ha ask the user to repeat themselves, right? Th you know, if you have the ability to listen properly, then this shouldn't be a problem at all. Under B, be able to resol is resolve issues fast and concisely by explaining the situation in an easy to follow manner. So this kind of goes back to ability to listen. If you're able to listen, uh, you know, if you have the good ability to listen, you can resolve issues fast. The point of that is to, you know, minimize the production impact, meaning that uh, uh, the faster you resolve users issue, the faster they will, uh, the sooner they will get back to work, right? This is very important. And this is uh, what uh, most companies want, right? And also have the ability to explain the situation in an easy to follow manner, meaning that you have to basically break it down for the user so they understand what the problem was, especially if they ask you, you know, repeatedly, what, what was the problem? What was the problem? Well, you have to have the ability to kind of explain it in an easy to understand manner, not be too techy about it, right? For C, have patience and understanding with customers, right? So whenever you talk to somebody, you have to have patience. Uh, that kind of uh, goes back to this ability to listen, right? You have to have patience in order to listen to somebody talk, right? So that's very important. And then understanding uh, with customers, meaning that, you know, whenever they call, they, they don't necessarily, you know, understand what could have caused their problem and they may be frustrated. So you have to have the ability to understand them, what they mean. Well, not what they mean, but how they feel. I should say, right? So this kind of goes to the feeling part of this, right? You have to have the ability to understand on how they feel and how this could be uh, frustrating for them to deal with because they simply may not understand why their computer doesn't work, right? All right, moving on to number two. How would you do, how would you do? <laughs> how would you deal with an issue that you can't resolve or understand? Under A, ask appropriate questions to get to the bottom of the issue without aggravating the customer, right? So this kind of goes back to understanding the customer. You know, you, you don't want to aggravate them and, you know, be demeaning at all. But also you want to know, uh, you want to ask the appropriate questions so that you can get to the bottom of the issue, right? And that goes back to, uh, you know, being able to resolve issues fast and concisely, right? So if you ask appropriate questions, you will be able to resolve these issues quickly and efficiently and without aggravating the customer, you know, so you see how it's all connected. And then B, you would uh, contact or inquire, uh, you, were, you would contact or acquire a solution from a coworker or a manager. So every time you don't know something, um, you know, certainly try your best to resolve it. But if you can't resolve it, your best choice is to ask somebody who is more knowledgeable than you, your senior, senior coworker or a manager, right? All right, moving on to number three. If you come across a frustrated customer, how would you deal with this situation? Um, so you see how it's a lot about uh, customer service, right? That's that's how the help desk is, right? So under A, reassuring customer that their issue will be resolved uh, is, is, a sh is a sure way to uh, calm them down, right? So it goes back to understanding the customer and uh, make sure you know that you reassure them uh, 
that we will, for example, uh, you know, customer says, well, why isn't this resolved? How, how, why do I have to deal with this? Blah, blah, blah. Then you can say, well, don't worry, we will, uh, we will resolve this uh, issue for you. Or you don't have to say it like that. You can say, well, don't worry, ma'am or sir. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to figure this out, right? That's one of the, you know, classic ways of, you know, talking to the customers, right? Under B, it is important to stay calm yourself and not get frustrated in order to handle the situation properly. Again, goes back to understanding the customer, right? So, you know, this one is kind of self-explanatory. You know, you have to be have the ability to stay calm, you know, have patience. And uh, that way you can deal, deal with any frustrated, you know, frustrated, uh, uh, frustrating, uh, I should say, situation. And then you'll be able to, you know, handle it properly, right? So it's incredibly important to have patience and understanding for users. Moving on to number four, have you ever had a conflict with someone? If so, how did you resolve it? Under A, we have tried to provide a minimal conflict situation in which you, in which the issue was resolved in a professional and courteous manner, right? So you want to provide an example uh, if this is an interview situation, right? Uh, you have to provide an example of a minimal conflict, right? And this is uh, specifically in an interview situation, which kind of leads me to number B, or number B, I should say, uh, answer B. You can also provide an answer. There was there was a simple misunderstanding of how you were able to resolve the issue, right? So let's say user comes in, calls in and says, okay, I need you, I need to talk to the manager right now. And then you're like, okay, uh, maybe I can assist you with, uh, you know, this and that. No, I uh, I really want to talk to manager because I don't think you're smart enough to handle this, right? And then uh, if you do this right, you can actually pull this off. But then you can say, well, uh, no problem. I can certainly get you a manager, but uh, I assure you we'll be able to resolve your issue. Um, do you want me to like, you know, give, uh, can I get any information on what the issue may be or um, what may be your issue? So that way I can tell the manager what the problem is and then we can you know resolve it so a lot of times what happens is you know once you get this information from the user sometimes you can even get back to them um you can say okay can i please show on phone on, on hold uh for uh, you know a couple of minutes uh till i look into this issue and at the same time i will uh, uh try to get a hold of my manager to help me out uh, or help us out to, you know help uh, help us resolve this for you and then you put them on hold right by the time you get back, chances are the customer or, you know, a user calm down a little bit. And then uh, you, within those two minutes, you probably, you know, there's a really good chance that you would know what the answer is. And then you can say, um, hello, and then, you know, hello, ma'am or sir. Um, okay, well, uh, I'm trying to get the manager for you, but um, it seems like if we do this or that, we could possibly resolve this issue for you. So um, it's up to you. We can try this, or uh, if you want, you can still, you know, we can wait for the manager. But uh, you know, you know, this and that. So you can kind of understand what I'm getting with this, right? So if you provide this type of uh, example, or if you deal with it in such a manner, you'll do pretty good when it comes to uh, any conflicts that you may have, you know, at work, you know. Uh, but if if this interview situation, don't mention like I had a fight with a coworker and then we fisted it out or something, you know. So let's move on to number five. How would you rate yourself from one to five based on the ability to resolve issues? Okay, so under A, uh, if, you, uh, if you're new to help desk or in customer service, you may not wish to rate yourself at five because the following questions may not be something you can answer. Um, if this answer, in this answer, you can uh, rate yourself uh, four, right? So this is, here's the thing. We always have something new to learn, right? Now, if you're an expert and you've been doing help desk for like 10 years, you know, you can uh, rate yourself at five. This is what kind of uh, B here kind of touches, touches on a little bit, right? You rate yourself at five because you're confident that, you know, you're 100% confident that you can do this. But if you had like a year, you know, or, or so, or if you're brand new to help desk, you can say, I would rate myself at four. Uh, I'm pretty knowledgeable, but there's always something to learn. So, uh, and that goes without saying, whether it's a interview situation or not, there's always something new to learn. And even if you, even if you don't practice something for a long time, let's say you were, 
you didn't do a help desk for like a year or something like that. Let's say you only did it for like six months, a couple of years ago. You can't really rate yourself, not even at four, unless you've spent time to kind of stay educated. And you know how like you spend time doing something and then suddenly you stop doing it for a long time. You're going to get rusty and you're going to forget a lot of things or or the things might be there, but you may not remember them. So you can't really rate yourself at five. You know, because there's always something new to learn, right? Um, number number six, how do you stay up to date with IT knowledge? Uh, okay, so you can uh, you can stay educated, um, I guess, uh, with, you know, mention internet books, education sources, um, you know, such as my YouTube channel, right? My YouTube channel is a really good source for uh, IT knowledge and such, if that's what you're into. And... Uh, uh, but if you're doing this, if, if this is, if this uh, question comes up during an interview, just kind of list some sources, you know, some, some, uh, um, I, I want to say, uh, proven sources, right? Somewhere that, you know, when, when you mention that there's a really good chance that this person asking you this question uh, will be like, aha, yeah, I go to the same website or I go to this same, you know, I don't know, uh, youtube channel or something like that you know to get you know to stay educated or whatever so that's one of those things you can uh it's not really an it question per se but more of kind of like knowing what kind of person you are and if you're proactive when it comes to your it knowledge right number seven uh why do you wish to work with help desk right so for this um i only have one multiple choice and that's provide an honest answer you know that you know, basically, if you like troubleshooting computers, then mention that. If you like, you know, if you gain pleasure in helping others, mention that. Also mention, you know, that help desk might be a good place to learn new things. So, of course, you know, yeah, I'm sure help desk in, in some places is a good place to earn money. And that might be a trendy thing. But just be honest with, with yourself. You don't have to necessarily be... Let's say it's not an interview, right? Let's say let's say you ask yourself, ask yourself, why do you, why do I wish to work, you know, with help desk or you know help desk type of job? You know, just be honest with yourself. If 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 you like the idea of answering phones all day and resolving computer issues, then you know that's great. You know, then you should definitely do it. Then if but if you're not, if you hate taking calls, and there are people out there who take hate taking calls, then then you might not want to do help desk. There are other things you can do in IT, right? Such as like desktop support or, you know, something like that. Um, God knows I have plenty of videos on, on on all kinds of different stuff. So number eight, how do you stay organized? So this is important. Um, you know, if you're answering this in, in an interview type of uh, situation, you can, you know, be specific. You know, you can say that you take notes and prioritize tasks at hand in order to resolve issues in an efficient manner. But, you know, when it comes to, um, in my opinion, when it comes to resolving issues quickly, you want to have uh, the most used information handy. You know, you have to have it handy in order to have easy time when it comes to dealing with different issues. So let's say you get a call mostly about, I don't know, resetting people's passwords for their logins, for their computer logins. Well, you might want to have that tool or Active Directory handy open, or chances are help desk, you will not have direct access to Active Directory. I mean, I don't know, some place, places maybe, I don't know. But you probably have some kind of tool that lets you, you know, reset uh, passwords. Well, you might want to have that handy all the time, let's say on a, like on, on, a, on another screen or, you know, or just kind of on a side, sort of like sticky notes or something like that, so you have easy access to it. That's one way of staying organized. So whether it's resetting passwords or pulling up certain type of information that's asked a lot during your uh, work day, during like eight hours that you work, make sure you have that handy, right? That's one way of staying organized, right? And if you have a lot of things to do, you can use a lot of things. I use Outlook, I use Word, Excel, and anything that helps me stay organized, you know? I honestly, at my current job, I use Outlook uh, calendar a lot to remind me of a lot of things that I have to do, um, you know, during the day and during the week, sometimes during the month, you know, sometimes I set reminders like two weeks in advance, just so I don't forget it, you know. Number nine, um, do you think it's important to be a team player, right? 
So, yeah, of course. Uh, if you don't have this type of uh, um, sense, then, I mean, that's fine per se when it comes to the help desk. Yes, I mean, it's important to be a good team player in a business environment where there is a lot of people. But if you're on the phone and it's all about you, then, yeah, you know, you don't necessarily have to be like that guy, that team player guy that, you know, does, you know, everything. Because that way, um, when it comes to the help desk, you know, you're mostly by your by yourself on the phone. Sure, there may be a guy next to you. And sure, you may ask him to help you next time or next time. Well, whenever you have an issue that you can't resolve. So that's when it's important to be a team player. But team player in a like grand scheme of of, of things, um, y you know, it's okay to be, but you don't necessarily have to be that main guy, you know, because it's not like on a help desk, you're going to be dealing with like a huge project that involves, I don't know, 200 computers or something like that, you know, so... Yes, it's good to be a team player, but it's not super important when it comes to help desk, right? But of course, it's important um, to be nice to people around you, right? You have to be nice to people around you and at least be a team player for the moments that you need, right? Because, you know, you got to look out for yourself. So if a difficult issue comes up, you ask somebody else and then you, if they have an answer, they you know, you, you, you resolve the issue in an efficient manner, right? So, you know, especially when it comes to working, you know, with different departments within the company. So let's say, you know, you have to call somebody else or say, okay, hold on, can I place you in hold while I get a hold of this people, this, this, this person, this and that. And then, you know, that then you have to be a team player. Then you got to learn that type of stuff. But do you have to be a team player all the time when, when you're taking calls? No, because you're mostly handling things on your own right so i mean that's just the reality of things i there's really no point of sugarcoating anything that's just the reality of things when you, when you think about it and the last thing uh which ticketing system are you familiar with i mean this is just part of this article and uh you know there's not much to be said about this one because there's just going to be a specific ticketing system that every business use and then if you're to interview you just mentioned which you know the ones that you're uh you know, familiar with, like, I don't know, HP ticketing system might be used by some company or, you know, whatever else. It could be something in-house. It could be something in-house made that you're not aware of. So just mention, if it's interview, just mention whatever you're familiar with. And when it comes to kind of learning about it yourself, then you pretty much just wait to be hired and they'll tell you what, you know, which system they use and they'll teach you. It's not a, it's not a big deal. All right, guys, again, this will be uh, linked. This article will be linked in the description box below. Thank you so much uh, for watching this. I really hope this helps out. Uh, leave a like, leave a dislike, leave me a comment. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Of course, uh, I, I do have a whole lot of different things on my channel. Also, look in the description box below. I've linked, I want to say, about 10 different videos that you can watch related to desktop support network administration system administration web development and all kinds of different stuff guys all right thank you so much for watching i wish you best of luck and i'll see you next time